Darth Sidious is one of the most evil characters in all of fiction, not even just Star Wars. There is a sharp lack of any sort of redeeming qualities in this particular Sith Lord, which is appropriate since George Lucas quite literally modeled him to be the devil himself. This is seen quite clearly as he exhibits all three traits of evil, narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy by manipulating everyone around him for his own means and then throwing them away like nothing. Sidious managed not just to become a Sith Lord, but THE Sith Lord, the one to end it all. He left a trail of darkness and blood in his wake to becoming the Emperor of the Galaxy and did not stop after his ultimate victory. So, welcome back, curious acolytes, back to our archives, as today we are going to be making a list of the worst things that Sidious has ever done, analyzing this man of pure evil. The Dark Lord's repertoire of evil deeds is most likely far too many to count, but we wanted to at least list some of the highlights. Of course, Sidious is responsible for all of the evil done by the Empire under his watch, but for this list, we wanted to focus in on the things that Palpatine did purposefully and with his own hands. Just like the list we did for Dooku, rather than it being a countdown, we're going to place his horrific acts in tiers, ranked from the most personal transgressions to galaxy-wide horrors. So now, let us begin. In Tier 3, we will begin at the very beginning. When Palpatine was a young man, right before he started his training with Plagueis, he murdered his entire family. This was a long time coming for his father at least, but young Chief Palpatine didn't stop at his father, but entered a rage that consumed the rest of his family as well. This came about as his father, Kasinga Palpatine, was trying to send his son away from Naboo and away from Higo Damask who was of course secretly the Dark Lord Plagueis. Sheev rejected this, and the two had a full-blown argument that resulted in Kasinga basically admitting that he hated his son, and knew since Sheev was a baby that he was true evil. With this admission, Sheev had all he needed to unleash the dark side hidden within him, throwing Kasinga repeatedly into the bulkhead of their ship until his head was completely caved in. Sheev then set his sights on his mother, his two brothers, and his two sisters, slaughtering them all with the Force. This was his first true venture into Sithood. Moving on to the next act in this tier, as if turning Anakin to the dark side wasn't bad enough, to add insult to injury, quite literally, Sidious punished Vader for losing on Mustafar by intentionally crafting his armor out of subpar and obsolete material. The results were a highly efficient but extremely underperforming suit for Vader to wear for the rest of his life. Even though Vader would make some upgrades and modifications to his suit later, it never recovered from the fact that Vader's suit was constructed outright poorly and ended up causing him extreme amounts of pain. Being the Emperor of the Galaxy, Sidious had the ability to make a suit that would allow Vader to be just as good as he was before, but yet he did not just to prove a point. We have done holocrons before about just how horrible it was to wear Vader's suit, but to make things even worse, Sidious made the suit super conductive to electricity, so that if Vader ever tried to overthrow the Emperor, Sidious would make short work of him. Darth Vader had no hope of ever progressing beyond where he was without help and Sidious knew it. With this being the ultimate betrayal of the young man that he called friend for decades. In our final spot for tier 3, we have one of his final acts of betrayal to his friends in the Clone Wars with the massacre of the Separatist leaders on Mustafar. It couldn't have played out any more perfectly, with Grievous delivering the news to Newt Gunray and the others that Sidious would be relocating them to Mustafar for safety. Of course, Palpatine just wanted them all in one place, like rallying animals in a single pin for the slaughter. He then sicked his new apprentice Vader on them, and the Dark Lord absolutely butchered them all while taking great satisfaction in doing so. Each of these leaders rebelled from the Republic, placing their entire faith in Sidious, hoping to lead to a better future in the end. Rather than integrating them into the Empire in any way, Sidious just had Vader butcher them all. I think this highlights just how afraid and confused all of them are when we see Newt Gunray begging for his life to Vader. He states that the war is over, and that he only wanted the peace that Sidious promised him. Unfortunately for the Viceroy, the kind of peace Palpatine offered was most likely not what Gunray had in mind, but it seems he would realize that all too late before he was bisected by Vader's lightsaber. To begin Tier 2, we'll return to the Clone Wars, where Sidious issued Cad Bane to abduct several Force-sensitive children. Following this, Sidious experimented on literal babies on Mustafar, 
as Sidious would appear via hologram, telling the surgical droids to prepare the surgery for the children. He tells the droids that it is his intention to create an army of Sith spies to overwhelm the Jedi. If the children don't survive the procedure though, he will have lost nothing, essentially stating to the droids to do their worst. So now, we can add performing deadly surgeries on infants to the list of Palpatine's evils. It doesn't stop here though. Whenever the Jedi finally find where the children are being kept, Palpatine orders the murder of these children, and the droids proceed to use the infants as shields while battling the Jedi. During his time as Emperor, Sidious would put in place many unfair policies that caused a lot of civil unrest in the galaxy. Many of these laws and procedures made it very difficult to make a living in the lower worlds, and they were quite oppressive to the galaxy's alien species. However, one of the most abhorrent things Palpatine did was re-legalize slavery. This was, in fact, one of the first decrees by the Emperor. During the events of Order 66, the clones on Kashyyyk began rounding up as many Wookiees as possible after they believed that they had taken care of all the Jedi. These Wookiees were all shipped to various labor camps, and many of them were taken to be forced to work on none other than the Death Star. Many slaves, in fact, were sent to the Death Star, along with resources that would have greatly benefited the Outer Rim worlds. During the time of Return of the Jedi, the Rebellion had managed to liberate a great many of these slave labor camps, which is one of the reasons why the Empire didn't have it finished by the time Sidious arrived, and the Death Star 2 remained incomplete. We can remember one of the officers speaking to Vader at the very beginning, where he tells the Dark Lord that he needs more men. This was due to the fact that they were having to use the Imperial workforce rather than slave labor to complete the second battle station. To finish this tier off, we're going to talk about the Blackwing Virus. First appearing in the Legends novel Death Troopers, the Blackwing Virus was a horrific experiment issued by Palpatine, which went horribly wrong in the most sickening way possible. The novel starts out with an Imperial prison ship going through hyperspace when they suddenly had to stop in the middle of the Unknown Regions. There, they encountered a Star Destroyer that was just floating there, all by itself, seemingly abandoned. After connecting to the Star Destroyer, the prison ship sent a task force of Imperial operatives to investigate the ship and salvage what they could so that the prison transport could make the rest of the journey successfully. Little did they know, what they brought aboard the ship would ultimately kill them all. The Star Destroyer had been a research facility, one overseeing a bioweapon that the Empire was attempting to use against the Rebellion. The bioweapon was codenamed the Blackwing Virus, a Sith alchemical plague invented by Darth Scabarus, an ancient Sith. The virus rapidly killed anyone who inhaled it and reanimated them into undead creatures. Sidious believed that his Imperial researchers could condense the virus, making a controllable weapon. Unfortunately for those aboard the Star Destroyer though, they had no idea what their Emperor had really given them, and an outbreak of the Blackwing virus quickly spread through the ship, turning thousands of Imperial troopers into literal zombies. Luckily for the Rebellion, the process was a failure, and it would never be seen on the front lines of the Galactic Civil War. And now my friends, we have Tier 1, we have the corruption of Count Dooku and Anakin Skywalker. While this may not seem as bad initially, and may belong in previous tiers, make no mistake, these were definitely some of Sidious's worst acts. Through Dooku and Vader, a great many people were murdered, and the galaxy was changed forever. Twice, Sidious seduced a great Jedi hero, and twice, these former heroes became monsters and tyrants. Dooku got the clone army started, and Vader would use the clone army to carry out Operation Nightfall. While the horrific acts carried out by these two Jedi turned Sith Lords fall squarely on their own shoulders, in the background, Sidious is foremost responsible, responsible for setting in motion all of their failures and atrocities. Even after manipulating them to his side, he would proceed to abuse them to rip them apart mentally and physically. Of all the evil that Sidious has done, corrupting the Jedi Chosen One will always remain the very highest on the list. Next is of course Operation Nightfall, Order 66, and the Jedi Purge. The second Jedi Purge was one that left a wound in the Force and a dark stain on the galaxy. It was honestly a stroke of brilliance, engineering the clone army and then orchestrating a war that would force the Jedi to use this army without question or hesitation. And then of course, play both sides of the war to spread out all the Jedi across the galaxy, separating them. Following this, secure the Chosen One under his control, and then in one fell swoop, 
turn the Jedi's trust in their clone troopers against them and have the clones murder their Jedi companions. Order 66 is a heartbreaking moment in the Star Wars mythos, but not just for the Jedi, for the clones as well. Their literal minds and bodies were hijacked, their free will stripped from them. Who they were previously was now forever damaged and gone. Sidious shorted out the brains of some of the clone troopers as well. Palpatine would have created millions of lives only to use them for his plans and then toss them away broken and deflated. Only a few Jedi remained, and they were all systematically hunted down by Vader and his Inquisitors, uprooting a great many lives along the way, murdering civilians if necessary. And now, I think the perfect conclusion to this list would be the creation and inception of the Death Star. The construction of a superweapon with the ability to destroy a planet, and with it, billions if not trillions of lives in an instant, is nothing but true evil. Sidious had fully planned to use this battle station to destroy the Rebellion and basically hold the galaxy at gunpoint, keeping any rebel factions from even thinking about rising up against him. Sidious had truly learned from all of his predecessors and wasn't about to let anybody betray him. He was almost successful too. Had the Rebellion not succeeded both times, the galaxy would have belonged absolutely to Darth Sidious, an iron will of the Sith eternal around the throat of the galaxy itself. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's tiered ranked list and some of the worst deeds ever committed by Darth Sidious. As always, my friends, thank you as always for watching. May the Force be with you, and I will see you in another holocron.